In case you're all wondering when Andrew Tate's problems really began, you just might find it correlates to when he rejected Christ and the God of the Bible, believing himself to have been a Christian when he never actually was. About your conversion. Yeah. So tell us the story, like what happened exactly. Well, I think a lot of people who've been following me for a while understand that I've been mm. very respectful of Islam for a long time. Yeah, sure. I was born in a Christian country. I was raised as a Christian. And I've always been very respectful of Islam, and it's become more and more obvious to me and, and more and more pertinent that Islam is the last religion mm. on the planet. Mm. When I talk about Islam, because I'm new to it, yeah. I, I, I'm a little bit careful, right? Because I'm new to it. I'm certainly not a scholar. There's so much I need to learn. I know I'm on a learning journey. I'm not here to sit here and, and talk scripture. I, I don't know those things yet. I'm here to learn. Yeah. But, and we're here at your assistance. Anyway, thank you, bro. Thank well, you. Honestly. Thank you. Yeah. But um, it's just for me, it feels like the last religion on earth. I feel like there's no other religion. People say to me, why did you convert? And I said, I don't really think, feel it as a conversion. I, it's almost like I knew God was real and now I've become religious. And they say, well, you were religious before. I was like, religious before how? Christian? Mm. What does Christian mean? Mm. Like, who's not a Christian? You go to Christian nations and everyone says they're a Christian. Look how they live their lives. Go yeah. into the average church. Is anyone actually fearful of God? Anybody? Mm -hmm. No. The girls were out on Saturday night drinking and then mm -hmm. they turn up to church because their parents made them. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's no substance to the religion. And also... Islam very closely reflects my personal beliefs. I, through my personal life, I've yeah. learned that if you don't have standards and you're not a strong person who's prepared to defend his ideas, you'll be crushed. Yes. And we look at most religions in the world today which are not prepared to defend their ideas. What's happened to them? They're just getting crushed. And yeah. now we have Christianity as an idea which has basically said, well, we can't set any firm rules because everyone will just quit. So instead, let's make it so easy to be a Christian that nobody has to put any effort in yeah. and then accept everybody no matter what. And hopefully we can keep the church doors open. <laughs> that's not that's not yeah. God to me. You know, yeah. Yeah. God to me is is strong. God to me is something to be feared. Yeah. God to me is something someone that people are afraid to mock. Yeah. God to me is someone that you have to go out of your way to prove something to. God to me has red lines yeah. like God to me re represents the Islamic faith. The Christian God to me, I don't see God. I, yeah. I can't explain. I don't see anything there. So yeah. to me, it was it was the only logical choice well, in the end. Alhamdulillah, man. I mean, many as you're saying this, I'm sure many people are like ecstatic. Psalm 1 said, Blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and he meditates on his law day and night. Prayerfully and hopefully through this trial, Maybe God actually brings Andrew Tate to a wake-up call and he finds out that he is a man standing in the need of grace and mercy. Amen. Let's all pray that the Lord will reveal Jesus Christ to Andrew Tate. Amen. Problem is this. Our problem is that. We say, no, 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 no. Our problem is that God created the world. And God created man and he put man in the garden to keep the garden and he gave the man a command and he held that man to perfect perpetual obedience to that command and he promised him life if he kept it and death if he didn't and he didn't keep it he ate and because he ate because of that one man sin entered the world and death through sin and everyone born from that man through ordinary generation inherited that man's sin nature and because of that sin nature sins proceed from it and our world is broken because of that sin and we stand guilty before a holy and righteous god and we know that he's holy and we know that he's righteous and we crave justice but the problem is that if God gives us justice we all die and so that God in his goodness and in his mercy sent forth his son who was not born of ordinary generation but was born of a virgin yes the virgin birth matters why because if he's born of ordinary generation he's born in sin but because he's not born of ordinary generation he's not born in sin he's clean of sin his record is clean and he keeps his record clean and he obeys god's law and because he's fully god and fully man he obeys the law of God on our behalf in his active obedience. And then in his passive obedience, 
God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. All we like sheep had gone astray. Each of us had turned to his own way, but God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And Christ died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust. And God imputes our sinfulness to him. And he nails our sinfulness to the tree. And Christ dies and raises again on the third day for our justification. And there's another imputation. The righteousness of Christ is actually imputed to us so that God can be both just and the justifier of the one who places faith in Jesus Christ so that all those who come to Christ may enter in. So that all those who place faith in Christ might be saved, but not only saved, but sanctified because he's the firstborn of many brethren. We're justified and we're adopted into the family of God and we're sanctified. And as his children, we begin to bear the family resemblance and we're further sanctified throughout this life by the very same gospel that saves us until one day when it's all said and done, we're not just saved from the penalty of sin, we're not just saved from the power of sin, but one day we're glorified and saved from the very presence of sin. That's the gospel that we preach. That's the gospel that we need. And that's the gospel that's more than enough.